SpaceX is no stranger to breaking records with its Falcon 9 rocket. Every few months, it seems like we witness another reuse record getting set, up to 22 reuses of a single rocket. However, a record that's not often broken is the frequency of rocket launches from launch pads. Recently, SpaceX once again demonstrated its relentless ability to improve by breaking this challenging record. The company completed one launch within just two days, paving the way for significantly increasing the frequency of SpaceX's future space flights. All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And hey, before we get into the main content, we want to tell you, first of all, thank you so much for supporting our channel these last three years. Right now, we're getting very close to that 100,000 sub mark. To achieve this, though, we do need your help. So please, if you're watching, hit that subscribe button now and you'll never miss out on any of our exciting content. Plus, your viewership gives us the motivation to keep making these daily videos. All right, let's continue. SpaceX suspended flights of its flagship Falcon 9 rocket for 15 days last month as engineers investigated why an upper stage failed to deliver a batch of Starlink Internet satellites to the correct orbit. After resolving the technical issue, SpaceX demonstrated incredible resilience. Conducting 10 missions in 19 days is a testament to this company's awesome operational efficiency and logistical capabilities. This means SpaceX right now is currently launching at a rate of one launch every two days. That's the fastest pace the company's ever achieved. If SpaceX can maintain this pace till the end of the year, the target of 148 launches for 2024 is going to set a historic record in the U.S. aerospace industry and for SpaceX itself. The variety of missions carried out in this short period is also noteworthy. Although most of the flights focused on deploying Starlink satellites, a crucial part of SpaceX's business strategy, the company still managed to perform missions for outside customers. This includes launching the Singus supply ship to the ISS, a vital mission for the station's operations. Deploying communication satellites for Norway to cover the Arctic is an example of how SpaceX is contributing to improving global connectivity, particularly in remote areas. Additionally, launching high-res Earth imaging satellites for Maxar highlights SpaceX's role in supporting advanced Earth observation applications. This rapid launch pace not only showcases SpaceX's technical prowess, but also reflects the growing demand for satellite launch services in the commercial space market. This could be a sign of rapid growth for the space industry as a whole. So far, SpaceX has conducted over 83 Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches. This means an average of one launch in less than every three days. So SpaceX's launch teams are well accustomed to launching rockets at high frequency. However, maintaining such a high launch rate presents numerous challenges and limitations. Managing three launch pads in two different states, Florida and California, requires tight coordination and detailed planning. Each pad needs to be maintained, prepared, and turned around between missions, requiring a continuous workforce of technicians and support staff. Another challenge is producing entirely new second stages for each mission. Unlike reusable boosters, the second stage of Falcon 9 is designed for single use. This requires SpaceX to maintain a continuous production line to meet the demand for frequent launches. The availability of drone ships for offshore booster landings is also a critical factor. These ships need to be maintained, refueled, and moved to the appropriate location for each mission. Managing this fleet requires close coordination with the launch schedule. SpaceX has been smart in using mission configurations that allow boosters to land on land when possible. Three of the last ten flights use this method, reducing pressure on the offshore landing fleet. This is one reason, along with possibly reserved upper stages, that SpaceX was able to launch so many missions over the last 19 days. Besides, recently, SpaceX announced a new mission that stands out not only as a contribution to the company's already dazzling rocket records, but also as a milestone in the history of space travel. The mission, named FROM-2, was unveiled August 12th and is scheduled to launch later this year. This will be the first crewed mission to explore Earth's polar regions. If all goes according to plan, FROM-2 will launch on a Falcon 9 rocket from Florida's Space Coast later this year, carrying four astronauts into orbit aboard a Crew Dragon capsule. This spacecraft will not dock with the ISS, but instead orbit the Earth independently. Throughout the three- to five-day mission, the crew plans to observe Earth's polar regions through Dragon's cupola at an altitude of 425 to 450 kilometers leveraging insight from space physicists and citizen scientists to study unusual light emissions resembling auroras, SpaceX wrote in the mission description. 
The crew will study green fragments and ribbons of continuous emissions comparable to the phenomenon known as STEVE, which stands for Strong Thermal Emission Velocity Enhancement, which has been measured at an altitude of approximately 400 to 500 kilometers above the Earth's atmosphere, the company added. The FROM2 will also study how spaceflight affects the human body. This work will include capturing the first ever X-ray image of a human in space. This mission will ultimately contribute to increasing the total number of private spaceflight missions to six to date, and of course, will be part of the ongoing development of Falcon 9 launches. Contrary to SpaceX's very busy launch schedule, Russia's space agency has been embarrassingly scarce in their rocket launches. In February of this year, the head of the Russian space agency announced a goal of 40 rocket launches for the year. Now, in the latter half of 2024, Russia should have reasonably achieved at least half of those proposed launches. However, sadly for the former Soviet empire, including the most recent launch of the Progress MS-28 cargo ship August 14th, Russia has only done nine orbital launches over more than eight months. There are numerous reasons for this, including decisions by Western space powers to distance themselves from Russia's space conglomerate Roscosmos following the invasion of Ukraine. This has led to catastrophic effects on Russia's space program, but only recently have we gained deeper insight into the extent of this impact. A financial crisis is unfolding in Russia. Roscosmos revenue fell to 10.5 billion rubles in 2021 from 32.3 billion rubles in 2018. The space agency appears to have sunk deeper into a financial quagmire as demand for satellite launch services, a primary source of foreign currency, has evaporated following the invasion of Ukraine. As a result, Russia's space industry has been operating at a loss in recent years and may not even break even until next year. Although Russia is doing its best to recover from the ongoing disaster by creating a new space economy, major projects seem to lack a clear future. Russia is also developing the Russian Orbital Space Station, or ROS, which has been frequently delayed. Current plans for launching a science and energy module in 2027 with the core of the station, four modules to be put into orbit by 2030. Subsequent expansions will occur in the early 2030s. However, it should be noted that these dates can generously be described as highly ambitious. Even more speculative are future rocket projects announced by the space agency, including the Amur LNG vehicle and the Corona rocket. In 2020, Russia set a goal to launch the methane-powered reusable first-stage Amur rocket by 2026. This vehicle was developed to be cost-competitive with SpaceX's Falcon 9. Yelkanov now says that Roscosmos intends to develop reusable first stages in two phases. In the first phase, a grasshopper-like program will test landing technologies before moving on to testing with a complete booster, but don't expect to see Amur anytime soon. Meanwhile, other countries are eager to make up for Russia's delays. India has launched 46 satellites for foreign customers last year, tripling its number from 2021. Low cost is India's strength, said Kazukai Shimonatai, a director at PwC Consulting. China's annual launches for foreign customers usually fall below 10, but the company has pledged to become a major space power. According to Euroconsult, the global space business market, excluding manned flights, is likely to increase from $12.2 billion in 2023 to $15.8 billion by 2032. The space consulting firm expects a severe shortage of rockets in the next 10 years as competition intensifies. European countries are not the only ones building rocket launch sites. Approximately 100 such projects are currently underway worldwide. Japan has two launch sites, one in Tangashima, a volcanic island between the East China Sea and the Pacific Ocean, and the other in the Kagoshima Prefecture, near the tip of the country's southernmost main island. Busy with government projects, neither site has sufficient capacity for the private sector. All 34 satellites that Japan currently has in orbit were launched by foreign rockets. Despite the lack of launch capacity and the often complex and time-consuming process of outsourcing launches to third parties, Japan has been slow to join the launch pad construction boom. However, the country's technology and entrepreneurial spirit are well-suited for a viable space industry. The Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency successfully launched the new H-3 rocket February 17th. On February 6th, the Japanese government announced plans to develop public-private capacity to launch 30 rockets annually by the mid-2030s. However, this is a daunting task considering the country only conducted two launches last year. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much and see you next time.